What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Anything Better podcast with your host, me, Paul Verzi, Bill Burr, and our producer extraordinaire, the Greek freak, Andrew Themlis, out there from the compound of Beverly Hills. We are back, everybody, <laughs> and you guys listening to episode number 73, another number that I am not, uh, hey, I'll be there in the 80s. What do you got, Bill? <laughs> Paul, you're a ball watcher. You don't go in the trenches. I got John Hanna. The great John Hanna from uh, the New England Patriots, not to be confused with his brother Charlie, who played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, if I remember. Ron Yari from uh, those great Minnesota Viking teams that unfortunately didn't take steroids, so lost to the Steelers. Uh, Larry, Larry Little, Larry Allen, Stan Jones. Oh. Huh? Larry Allen, one of the best. Larry Allen, one of the best uh, offensive linemen ever. No, there you go. Yes, uh, Dallas Cowboy. How do you not love an offensive lineman? You got to. 300-pound smart guy going up against those dopes that are just looking at the ball, Paul. I mean, the brainiacs, the nerds are the offensive linemen. We all know this. The defensive linemen, I mean, there's not a thought in their head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying shit that I've heard offensive linemen say to me. They, they, so they I, have no respect for defensive linemen. They say they just line up and like, oh, go have the ball. <laughs> um, let's talk about this. I was out there with you guys. I had my little Paul visit Verzi to Paul came out to Los Angeles. Yes. And I loved it. I always love my trips out there. I really do. Um, and we decided, well, uh, Bill said, hey, do you want to go see TCU Georgia? Uh, we're like, yeah, we do. So we get a group of fellas. We get into a nice little uh, ride there. We go over there. We have a good time. Nice little we ride. A we had a van, uh, a sprinter van on the way over. It was amazing. I felt like I was, was inside so an aquarium. Oh, my God. The comedy that went on in there. The ball. It was so fucking funny, dude. We had a friend who got a little, t- <laughs> got a little tipsy there. So it was a lot of fun. There's always one person that's a little out in front of the group. You know what I mean? When it comes to, uh, you know. Well, it's funny you say that. It's funny you say that because I'm going to be in a sprinter tonight. Even though I'm under the weather, I checked for COVID. There's no COVID. You know, Paulie's got a little cold. It's something that we could persevere or go right through. It's fine. But I'm going in a sprinter down to Billy Joel tonight at the Garden. So Billy Joel's oh, playing the Garden. Great. A friend of ours, it's her birthday. I'm still my standing. Wife. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to. I did time, that on I'm purpose gonna be... just to watch Andrew shake his head and be like, that's Elton John. I'm sorry. Oh, that's. You know what? I, that's how little I know I went with it. That's all right for fighting. I Get went with it. election in. Yo, that's how you should Andrew, troll people in the I parking lot that doing that. Was. Bill, as you sang that, I was like, I almost, I almost kept singing it thinking you were right. That's how little I That's know. why I was laughing. I was like, Paul's sailing right through this. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, Do that oh. to people at the concert tonight. I want to be oh, like, I'm so psyched for Billy standing. Joel. On the dark side. Yeah, oh, yeah. On the dark side. And then they just in there. That's, that's not. And then just be like, oh, that's not him. Play Rocket Man. Play Rocket Man. was like, no. Rocket dude, Man. Just... Fucking something. It's something. Yeah. Like no, Paul, it's Piano Man. No, he does. He does both. <laughs> he does both. I think we're alone now. Doesn't Dude. seem to be anyone around. Then they'll know you're fucking with them. All right, so you're gonna go see Billy Joel. I'm gonna go see Billy. Dude, Joel he sold tonight. that place out more than the Knicks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's got more consecutive wins. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no. It's a, it's a it's a deserved joke. It's a deserved joke. But um, oh, now you got me feeling bad, Paul. So we leave the stadium, Bill, and it's pouring. No, 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 no. Uh, You're going to skip past the fucking game? Me and Paul go down go. to the game. We're like, TCU's getting 13. Well, you got to be fucking kidding me. You had yeah. 12 and a half. I remember I got 13. You're like, oh, that, that's a big half point. That's a big half point. We both put 500 bucks on the game. That was the worst fucking college football game I think I've ever... That, that looked like a game in September when they have, like, fucking Alabama plays who gives a fuck community college. 
Those fucking assholes, Paul. I, I want to say the entire team, the coaching staff, they, they quit by the second quarter. Okay, I'm just a comic, Paul. What do I know? They rushed three guys the whole game. They never blitzed them. They stayed back in the zone that wasn't working. The fucking game, Paul, it was over in four minutes. I've never seen a football game where it was truly over with four minutes left in the first quarter. Truly over. Over. It was unbelievable, dude. It, Paul, it was a historic ass kicking. Oh, my God, dude. That was just. I mean, there's probably people transferring out of that school just as students is how bad they got their asses kicked. Now, granted, the fucking, you know, the fucking Bulldogs came out with like Steve DeBerg at quarterback. The kid was like fucking 42 years old at an AARP card. He was just standing <laughs> back there just picking away at the zone. The whole fucking game. Oh, my God, dude. And it's funny. When TCU caught that one touchdown, I hit Bill on the arm, and I go, yo, we're definitely covering, dude. It, they're, they're back. It's only, see, yeah, see how Totally quick. blown coverage. God knows we could see it. We were sitting way up where it was fucking raining. Oh, my God. We could almost poke our heads through the clouds and see the sun on the other side. <laughs> hey, Paul, I'm telling you, we were up there. What a beating, dude. What a beating with the big game like that. I've never been I never seen anything like that. You know, it was amazing too. The roof was leaking. I kept trying to explain to people like they I think they just built this to keep the sun off you. I didn't think that they would they they knew that there was gonna be a tropical downpour here. And it the place, you know, was leaking the worst over the TCU fans. Those oh. poor fucking people. That's why I just kept thinking the amount of them that drove. Oh, all the way from Texas. I mean, it takes two days just to get out of Texas, Paul. They Dude. drove all the way there with their purple hopes and dreams. Literally, the, the football gods were crying on them the whole game. Dude, and it was 51. When they'd hit you. <clears throat> it was 51 to 7. Halfway through the third, it was 51 to 7. I've never seen fans look 52. so... 52 to 7. That's when we left. Yeah, yeah, that's when we left. Devastated. I told you in the second quarter, I was like, Paul, if I was at home, I would have shut this game off. You and oh. I held on to hope, though. So funny. We held on to hope. To, when Dude, like, two scores. Dude, two scores. And then, and then you know, we're like two scores away from 12. Yeah, the two, yeah two scores were still two scores down. Dude, Georgia was covering 13 points about nine minutes into the game. It was unreal, dude. I've never seen. I, I've I've just never fuck. I, I'm trying to remember the last time in a fucking championship game, dude. That was John Elway and the Broncos versus the 49ers in 1990. Oh, that was the that was the 49ers versus uh, the Chargers. Junior say I'll rest his soul. That was that was 55 to 10 or something like that. That was. That oh, was that was even a worse one? Oh my god, yeah, just horrible. Oh my God, dude. Um, and then we go outside and it's pouring. And I saw a TCU father look at his son and they tried to take cover under a thing. And he just goes, it was either he was really cool, so it might have been an uncle, because he just looked at the kid and he goes, So far the experience, buddy. So far the experience. Dude, we walked out. We walked uh, out at the perfect time. <clears throat> there was nobody coming out. Then one of our buddies had to go to the bathroom, went back into the stadium. We're like, what the fuck? And then it just started raining. And then he got out there and we started walking towards the van. Our van driver went to the gym. The guy was at the fucking gym because who, I mean, I, I wasn't upset with the guy. Who knew we were going to come out 45 minutes early? Who knew, Paul, we would come out the amount of minutes early that the fucking TCU horn frog, come on frogs, we're going to be down. All right, if I got to be honest. And we went out there, and the second we got out in the rain, dude, within 10 seconds, it was raining so hard and so much wind, it was coming sideways. Um, all right, I got to – this is where I got to disagree with you. I think, just me, I think that you don't go to a gym when you're driving a group of guys to a football game and the weather's like that. I think you should know the weather. I think going to the gym is a little – like <clears throat> having plans of your own during that is a little fucking for me. I'm just well, like, what would you be doing? We're going to be gone for three hours. You just be sitting there right outside the stadium where they don't let you sit 
And by the time we got out there, half the fucking crowd was leaving. So I bet people who stayed to the end of the game waltzed out. It was probably a sea of goddamn red and like three purple shirts. I don't know. I'd probably find a local Chick-fil-A, stay in the parking lot for a little, eat some nuggets, listen to the game. You're not a gym guy. (laughs) I'm not going to the gym during work. I'm not going oh, to the gym. Like I'm burning working. calories. It's it's yeah, the yeah. intake. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe I was just pissed off because it was raining. Either way, it was a great time. You're one of these guys, Paul. You do this. It's coming down. You just start putting... <laughs> Look, I lost. I lost some weight. Look at I just I was on an elliptical for five minutes. Um <clears throat> but yeah, great time. I, I actually it was so bad I wanted to apologize. I felt bad. You know, I got I to gotta hook up, you know, through my agency to get some tickets, you know, that weren't going to be a zillion dollars. And we all fucking go. That was the only good part. Yeah, we got, well, face, value. We got face value tickets, thank God. But even that, you know, and then I, I just, we were so excited, Paul. We walked yeah. in that, we were so fucking excited and... It was like it was literally like watching a fucking senior in high school take an ice cream cone away from a third grader. Yeah, but I learned something. You know what I learned, Bill? I'm never betting on college football again. I'm gonna stick to the pros, dude. I just don't know enough. And I saw TCU play Michigan, and I go, they're pretty good against the run. I mean, I don't know enough about college football, so it was completely fucking stupid. Oh, and I let lost- me tell you something, fucking. Georgia almost lost to Ohio State, who backed into the playoffs. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. You know, if they didn't have that blown coverage and that kid didn't fucking kick the ball like he was kicking a shoe, I thought his shoe came off when I saw that fucking ball. Um, Yeah. They they wouldn't even have been in it. Yeah. Now, it should have been a red flag that TCU got two pick sixes and still almost lost that game to Michigan. That's what I was thinking afterwards. But I was like... Georgia didn't really impress me either. They they snuck by Ohio State. So you're gonna give yeah. me 13 fucking points. I think in the I, I don't know how to Paul, Paul, listen. I went 0-5 last week against the book, and then I fucking lost TCU. I'm 0-6, Paul. Dude, a housewife couldn't do that if she tried. For a new SUV with heated seats. <laughs> yeah. You know, she and some non-stick TV. pans. She all you need to do is get one. One she could just pick. She could just pick the color uniform she likes. <laughs> well, not only did my teams lose, they got smoked. I took the fucking Raiders versus the 49ers. They, I don't know what they lose by thirty. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. The one I, I had know. was the Pats over the Dolphins, which I switched, and they they covered, and then they went to the fucking prevent, gave them a touchdown, and then they didn't. I had the fucking Ravens. Oh, the Ravens have a defense. Got fucking smoked, dude. It was like twenty-four to seven in the second quarter. That was the only. That was the only good part about going zero and five. Other than the Pats game, all of my games were so over that I'd gone through all the emotions by the second quarter. <clears throat> yeah, it was like the TCU game. You just got it in the back of the head. You just got, you just got shot in the back of the head quick. So, <clears throat> um, dude. Then I made the mistake. I go back. We go back and we hang out, hanging out with Bill. We're smoking a cigar. I'm sopping wet. And I didn't take dry clothes like an asshole. And I got sick. And oh, it's by the like, way, we were soaked to the bone. I had a raincoat. <clears throat> what the fuck is in my throat here? Not smoking. I don't want this. I think I have leftover pneumonia. <clears throat> um, we weren't smoking or anything like that. Sorry, smoking. We weren't. We, I, we were. Uh, I was dry from the, from the kneecaps down because I wore a raincoat and had the right boots on. Dude, you were standing out there like it was going to be a sunny day. You were soaked to the was, fucking bone. Dude, my jeans, my jeans were sopping wet. Jeans. Yeah, they weighed like 40 pounds. And Bill is sitting there with a fucking, a, a, an Alaskan, an Icelandic, whatever. He's got the whole trench coat. He's got the thing. He's totally fine. And I'm looking at him going. Oh, not not from the knee, from between my knees and my Icelandic boots. I understood your pain. <laughs> yeah, I was all of that. I was all of that. Thank God it wasn't cold. If it was cold, I'd be in a hospital bed right now. But thank God it wasn't cold. Um. I don't know. That wind started blowing when you got wet. It was a little chilly. 
Dude, we get back in the sprinter and we're all <clears> sopping <throat> wet, pretty much except for Bill. And one of the funniest things of the ride is Bartnick. Our friend Joe Bartnick is in there. And Joey was feeling no pain. And he just goes like this. It was, dude, it made the, the bus ride. He goes, no, dude, remember the time? Here's what happened. And he goes into the story. And he just goes, no. And then, uh, and then he paused. And then halfway through, he just goes, I fucked it up. And, dude, it was. <laughs> oh, yeah, just bailed. He had everybody listening. And right as I was starting to think, like, where is this going? He just goes, like, oh, you know, I fucked it up. Oh, he and threw the was towel it. in. Oh, dude, he threw the towel in on himself, and we just made fun of it for a good half hour, and he was just laughing. That bus ride was really fucking fun, man. It was really fun. It's Factor, everybody. Uh, this new year, uh, you've got goals, and Factor is here to help you achieve each and every one of them. Save time. Uh, and have the energy you need to tackle everything on your to-do list with Factor's ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Get Factor and not only skip the trip to the grocery store, but skip the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up, which we all know can be uh, annoying, but who am I kidding? My wife does it. I don't cook. Uh, Factors, fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. No matter what your lifestyle, Factor has meals to help you live it to the fullest with keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie and protein plus meals on uh, the menu each week prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. Each meal has all of the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long. With 34 chef prepped, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 36 plus quick bites, smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add ons. Eating vegan or veggie is a snap with factor. Because each meal is prepped by chefs and approved by dietitians. Well, they keep saying that one, huh? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I'll do that again. Because each meal is approved, is prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians. You know your factor meal has all the ingredients you want and nothing you don't. And if you're looking to mix it up, you can add protein to select vegan and veggie meals each week. Get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meal and enjoy fresh, flavored, pa uh, packed meals delivered to your door. Guys, ready in two minutes. There is really no easier way to eat well. I mean, dude, to heat up a healthy meal and just hit, just heat, it's pretty, pretty, uh, that's nice, Andrew. I like that. It's how lazy we are. Anyway, achieve and maintain goals with each, uh, this year. With Factor, get America's number one ready to eat meal kit and start saving time, eating well, and living your best year ever. Head to factor75.com uh, slash better60 and use code better60 to get 60% off your first box. Guys, that's here's the code it's better60 at factor75.com slash Better 60 to get 60% off your first box. All right, everybody. It is rocket money. If your New Year's goals are to manage your uh, budget better and save money, you need rocket money. Say goodbye to last year's outdated, disorganized methods of managing your money and say hello to rocket money, the better way to hack your finances in 2023. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about. Dude, I actually do that, and it's kind of nuts to just like you're like oh why is eight dollars coming out? You don't even you know you don't even know this will definitely uh, take care of that. Okay, so yeah, if, if 80 people don't know uh, don't know about it, you could be one of them. <laughs> Forget this streaming service you bought, watch just one show or that free trial you never even used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for those you don't want. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as a click of a button. 
Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No, uh, no more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. It's a lot of money. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash better. That's rocketmoney.com slash better. Save the money. Have them take care of those things that you totally forgot about. Just make sure you go to rocketmoney.com slash better. That's a B-E-T-T-E-R. Hey, you forgot uh, about golf, Paul. We went out and played nine holes. Dude, we went to um, – here's my my only gripe, if I'm being an asshole, and I'm not an asshole. I'm just going to say I actually enjoyed the fucking golf course a lot more than I thought for a public course. The only thing is that course lets groups of more than four on, dude. It looked like – at one point, it looked like a tailgate. There were, I just saw golf bags and like seven people on a green. There was a fivesome in front of us. We were a fivesome, and there was four or six or five behind us, and, and it was slowing down. Oh, yeah, dude. It, it, we looked like the gallery at like a golf major waiting for somebody to tee off. Dude, I was uh, – how about Bill going in the sand and Bill go? This is why I like golfing with guys like you. Because guys like you, you just listen. So Bill's like, what do I what do I do here in the sand? Just go hit an inch behind it. And and he goes, and then stop. I go, no, follow through, finish. And then you just went. And, dude, you had a sick out. We both broke 50 after not playing for a while. You played great. Um, it was a lot of fun, dude. It I just shot a 49. I still got the title is four. Title is four lives. Title is four lives. 27 lives. holes. I played on the, with the same ball. I hit it straight, Paul. It doesn't go far, but I hit it straight. That's the key, you know. That's the key. You just gotta can't can't try to be a fucking show off. Watch, you know what that guys? lady we were golfing with who fucking hold hold out from like fifty yards away. Oh, dude, yeah, she was this little short woman, and she was just straight as an arrow, steady Eddie. I kept we kept calling her steady Eddie. Yeah, she had the hat, the magic hat. She had the. I'm not gonna lie, she was so good. I started feeling bad for her husband. Because she just kept getting compliments, and the husband would just smile. But part of him had to be like, "Yeah, dude, she's just better than me." <laughs> no, but he also he got life. <clears throat> yeah, he gets life. You can tell he's one of those guys. He's comfortable with who he is. She's better at golf. He doesn't give a fuck. She wants to drive. He doesn't give a fuck, Paul. And you just see the look on his face, happy as a yeah. clam. Oh, Whatever smiling. the fuck that means. No, Whatever he, that he... Means. you can't see a clam's face. I've never understood that. Is it because the shell looks like it's smiling? Andrew, and all you, you look that up. I'm Happy sure. Happy as a clam. Here's the thing, too. While you're doing that, all you young comedians, you New York comedians, you East Coast comedians going, I hate L.A. It's the same thing as people that say, I hate Vegas. Vegas, I kind of get because it, it is. But you just have to do it right. L.A., dude. You eat good in L.A., you play some golf or go to the ocean in L.A., you go see some good shows in L.A. Go on dude. a hike. Dude, it's amazing. It's, well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> We're talking about me here, but you go to a steam, you play golf. No, dude, I got to be honest with you. L.A., man, it's um, it's it's pretty fucking cool, man, if you do it right. I, I really think so. I, I think the – I mean, of course, I picked the worst weather, though. I mean, like, I've been to L.A. so many times. I've never had it be, like, East Coast. It was, like, worse than the East Coast. I was like, what the fuck? But yeah, you came out. Week. It's rain. It's going to rain again this weekend and everything. So is this the worst time of L.A. weather of the year, like, every year? Um. Well, I mean, if you think, well, rain is bad for people in parts of the world where it doesn't, where it rains all the time. Like, oh, fuck, it's raining. It never rains out here. So I get excited when it rains out here because I'm like, God knows, yeah. you know, I, and then I get upset when I watch hundreds of thousands of gallons, if not millions of gallons of water rushing down the L.A. River into the fucking ocean. And then the politician go, don't water your lawn. You know, a few months later, it's like, why don't they? I, I, I talk about it all the time. I, they, it, you know, there's no money in it, Paul. 
Wait, there's but no why money is in being bad? smart. <clears throat> why is it bad if water goes down the LA River into the ocean? Because you could save it and we could use it. The very least, you could filter it. You could use it, it for it. drinking water. You could use it to water your fucking lawns. I don't know. You could you, use it for yeah. people who like to go boating and shit, too. These water lines in some of these areas, like out in like Utah, Nevada, and California, you know, Southern California, are like a skyscraper lower. You see the water line, and there's places where people used to jump off the cliffs into the water. You can't do it anymore because now it's too big, too long a fall. You'll die. So some shithead is going to be like, I used to go to this quarry when I was a kid. He's gonna fucking, <laughs> that's going to be, the, that's the gonna, it's going to be it. The LA River only collects 20% of the rainfall. Uh, that oh, Excuse me. Only 20% of the rainfall stays in LA. The LA River sends the other 80% out to the ocean. So yeah, like Bo's saying, it's not oh, irrigation. I got excited that they were collecting 20% of it. If, if they could just somehow... I don't know. Just do the fucking right thing. Like, I don't know what they're waiting for. You, everybody, you know something, Paul? It's just like during the pandemic. Everybody's going to do what's good for them, and they just yeah. don't give a... Nobody gives a fuck about their fellow man. They just don't. Everybody's no. just like, well, this is working for me, so fuck you and fuck everybody else. While everybody talks about America, support the troops, you know, fucking, you know, uh, blah, 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 and all that fucking patriotic rhetoric... It's all fucking bullshit. It's all bullshit. 99% of people will fucking step over you to go get something for themselves. That's what I believe, and that's why I think that these fucking politicians won't do anything about the river because they're too busy trying to kiss the ass of the corporation so they can get the big house and the fucking smoking hot wife. That's, that's what their focus is, Paul, over keeping this place livable, which shouldn't even be here anyways. Never should even have happened. Never should have happened, Paul. <laughs> L.A. never should have happened. We should have just left it alone. Never did. Never did. In that case, you might be as happy as a clam. The phrase is shortened from happy as a clam and high water because clams appreciate a higher tide. Uh, they're a less, uh, more protection from uh, birds. So if you're happy as a clam. So it's happy as a clam and high water. And then it got shortened. That makes sense. Happy as a clam. I think it was like sometimes the <laughs> shell maybe looked like a smile. Dude, I thought that too. I thought the shell was smiling. That's hysterical. And that's um, not even the thing's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not- like the Smokey Robinson, <laughs> tears of a clam, right? <laughs> so, people say I'm the life of the party because Billy Joel. Dude, you know how I knew you were getting good at golf? This is how you know somebody's getting better at golf for all you people that golf out there. When they putt and the putt doesn't fucking just like you're putting. Your putting was when I was like, oh, dude, that's why that's why you're you're back. You're better because you putt good because everything else you keep simple. It's amazing. Andrew, you got to come and swing the wrenches with us. Oh, it's what a football ball, game. Not that hard a game. It just isn't. It's an activity. It's a, it's a difficult activity on a good course. I, you know what, Paul? I'll give that to you. It is a difficult. I'll tell you that about that golf, Paul. That is a difficult activity. Yeah, I mean, where do you put pool and pool, shooting pool? That's not a sport, right? No, it's an activity. Bowling? Activity. Those are activities, Paul. Yeah. No, it's I'm not asking. an athletic endeavor. It's the same amount of muscle memory that a woman can like apply her makeup while still driving a fucking stick shift after a while. You know what I mean? It's just muscle memory. <laughs> it becomes athletics, Paul, when you're competing with another human being in a physical endeavor, I would think as far as like, and they can like try and stop you. What about Formula One or NASCAR racing? Where do you put that? Those are not sports. Yeah. I don't. I don't think so because you're not really. I, I, I would put those guys somewhere in the test pilot world, as far as G forces and having to keep your your blood in here and not pass out and and the physical beating that you take. I feel like with the way that those Formula One cars can corner at the speed, that's not athletic as yeah. much as like, dude. If, if you wanted to, you could have flown an F sixteen. 
And there's a very few people that can do it. So I'm tipping my cap to race car drivers. But, you know, <clears throat> you're driving a car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at a, yeah, at a crazy rate. But, yeah, it's like. And I know guys who suck at sports but are really good drivers. <laughs> I know a guy that, like, fucking throws like a girl. And you get him in a fucking BMW M5. And he'll have that thing on fucking two wheels. That just made me think of a guy like, stop it. That's in an F-18, damn it. Nah, nah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a danger. You zone. saw all those fucking pilots playing volleyball in the first one? <laughs> getting, all, getting all oiled up? No, you're right about what you said. I think like holding the G-force, that, that actor Miles Teller was on a podcast and he talked to he was doing, he did a thing and they were all like, dude, that's nuts. Where he was just going like, shh like he was doing this breathing thing where like when you're up there you need to like get every it was dude, dude you gotta was, hold the tight thing going, <sighs> yeah he's going <laughs> yep, do you ever see that there's a woman who uh there's this woman dude it's fucking she's amazing but it's just hilarious because her face is like doing this shit and it's just like she's she's sitting there looking like this and then she's coming around she's going like, <sighs> making these fucking you know what she looked like she looked like that rittenhouse kid when Rittenhouse was pretending to cry oh, like to cry. Yeah. Off, he's going to... <laughs> yeah, he looked like he was like, the G forces of his lies. Um <laughs> Yeah, they all dude, think they're gonna we, that was the worst fake crying I think I've ever seen in my life. Oh, that was terrible, oh. dude. Oh just shaking doing that. It, there was like no tears coming out. Oh my god. <laughs> The G force of his lies. No, man, those people though, man, like those guys um, in the movie, they said too, like a guy will pass out in the thing and then come out of it. Just fucking nuts, dude, to be up in yeah. the air like that. No, I, I saw a plane race where that happened. They were trying to figure out what the guy did. It was like he pulled too many G's. He's actually not conscious. That's that's why it just went into the ground. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So I would put race car drivers are in that world have you ever gone when you go to vegas dude if you really get gain appreciation for the physical beating you take driving a race car um they they have like out there we can take like ferraris out and lamborghinis and all of that and uh you're gonna go out there and drive like an asshole you're just gonna hit stomp on it you don't realize it's not about necessarily going fast and slamming on the brakes it's going around as smooth as you can is what's going to get you around. But, dude, my brain was like my body and all that. And I, I did five laps. How fast were you going? Uh, I mean, top speed, like a buck 40. Like nothing. That's, that's still fast. Nothing. Yeah. And I'm not racing anybody. I'm just driving yeah. around like an asshole. I, was, I drove like an asshole in a Ferrari five laps, and I needed to sit down. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, and those NASCAR guys go like those NASCAR guys are like really close to each other, going like one eighty, right, one ninety. Yeah, I know that it got ridiculously fast somewhere around the time when Bill Elliott was winning, and then they finally had to slow it down. I think it was when that guy, there was this horrific accident where he just got lifted up in the air, caught his car, he got hit, he started, the air got underneath his car, and he went up against the fence, dude. It was fucking terrifying. And when the guy got out of the car. He said, how many people did I kill? He thought he was convinced that he had killed people. Like, I don't, it was, a, it was, a, it was an absolute miracle. And also wow. that fence somehow held it. But I think at that point they were like, listen, man, that guy was about five feet from that car going over that fucking fence and into the crowd and killing about 50 people. Jesus. So we, we got to slow this down. So I think they, they slowed him down a little bit, but there was a time when, uh, during those Daryl Wall trip, Kale Yarborough, Harry Gant, Bill Elliott, when I used to watch it, when fucking, um, what's his face? Dale Earnhardt still had the yellow and, and blue uh, Wrangler. I was totally into it, dude. I used to fucking build those models. I'd go to the hobby town. It's before the internet, kids. And I, I would, I would like, Kale Yarborough was my favorite. All hail Kale. I remember that when he won it one year. And they used to go like 210 miles an hour in a fucking Buick Regal. <laughs> Jesus. Well, dude, you know what? I got to give you some you guy in an old Cutlass right on his ass. And then a guy in a Monte Carlo behind him. Harry Gantt, Skull Bandit. 
You said something and you were right, dude. You were right. You said it years ago when I told you that I went to a show in um, Cleveland. But, dude, air shows, air shows just can't go. They're the worst, man. That's the dumbest thing as a spectator. You're you, right. You'll never more. I would say that. And I would also think that Isle of Man motorcycle race that I want to go to. Like, I, you just got to make sure. I don't know where I would be. You want? I would think the inside of a corner was I would want to. Like somebody like dies every year. Like they've had more people die than years that they've done it. It's just this motorcycle race, dude. And oh, is that just, where they fly off the side of the road, dude? That's, off cliffs yeah, yeah. or just yeah. go into the side of a pharmacy that was built when Christopher Columbus needed fucking cold medicine? Jesus. Yeah, no. I saw a horrible, horrific scene at an air show where people are in the bleachers looking up and like a World War II plane went into those bleachers, dude. And it was fucking terrifying and brutal. And then this pilot just died. They were doing a show and a guy in Dallas, they just it just cut the plane basically in half. They went down in front of everybody. Horrible, man. It's like it's it's you were right about that. I remember going, oh, me and Chris Porter. We I saw the fuck. It was nuts, dude. I saw the plane coming and you were like, don't do that. I'm going like now I'm seeing all these things about it. It's brutal. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I mean, if you want to, if you can, you can hang out near uh, military bases. If you can get near them, depending on them, you can watch them take off and they're not doing dumb shit. I've seen that a few times in like. Uh, Dude, I saw one one time. I mean, the guy, they they take off, and then they, they take off, and then they just go like this. And then they go up, yeah. I, I mean, and they're just like up to like fucking, I don't know what. Past it's commercial insane. airspace. Like, I, I that my thing is like, they must have that. They When you're going to do something like that, the amount of airspace, how fast he's going to go up that you have to clear. <coughs> it's it's yeah. insane. Yeah, like there's a commercial plane up near there. <laughs> Got it. One be. time I was flying up near whatever, whatever that fucking uh, military air base is. I was soloing. I was in this. Uh, I was in an R22, which is the egg beater's egg beater. Like this thing, analog gauges. Fucking, you do an auto in that thing, you're gonna be on the ground in like three seconds. It just drops. It drops like a fucking stone. So. I'm trying to transition through their airspace. And they said, all right, uh, you know, you go behind. We got two planes, whatever, two jets coming in. And I'm looking out and all I'm seeing is one. And I'm in this little thing. And these things are fucking, you know, they're just coming in and they look like they're going like that fast. And I'm like, where the fuck is the other one? Where the fuck is the other one? Oh, no, it's with an instructor because he goes, wait, watch this, watch this. And they flew in like this. And as they came around, all this one landed and the other one like covers them. It's like some military thing. Like, they were flying so close together, it looked like one plane. Wow. Dude, I remember I was up there with you, and I'm sitting in the back with Dean Del Rey, and you're up there with the instructor, and I had the fucking headset on, dude. And it was the first time I was ever in a helicopter, so I'm hearing everything that Bill and the instructor is saying. And the instructor's looking around, dude, and I'll never forget this. And I know I heard it. He goes, yeah, we got a... Uh, go." He goes, we got a plane somewhere, and then you go, where is it, or something? And he goes straight for us but it was under it was like hundreds of feet under but the way he said it was straight so i'm looking at dean and dean's fucking dazing off going this is rat you know going dude right. there's, a, there's a fucking plane coming and then you like kind of looked over like yeah you shouldn't be listening to like it was it was under like you knew that i was, I was like, that plane went right underneath us but dude we were talking to the tower and they told us we knew what altitude they were so i just yeah. went up and he went under yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I just was hearing that shit, and I was just like, uh, you guys want to turn this off? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do that. There's a button you can hit so they don't have to listen to, to Oh, any of okay. That, that was when we, yeah, we flew that bell. Bell something or other up there, up to uh, – we were working up in Santa Barbara. I got one for you. What's the Rolls Royce of helicopter? Like, what's the – like, is there like a eight-seat, like, leather – like, do they have that up there or no? Yeah. They yeah, do. Yeah, dual engine and they fly executives and there's a whole thing like it has to be a dual engine because the person that you're flying is, um, you know, worth so much money to the company. Those would be those, um, I'm not good with high end. I mean, they, they're so expensive, I don't even look at them. Like my dream right. is to have like an A-star or something like that. 
Um, it used to be the uh, the MD 500, and then I flew in one, and I realized it wasn't really comfortable. Um, they just sort of, it's a weird sort of like, you're almost like leaning forward. Um, but they're, they're fun to fly. Um, they're like a sports car, but I would say the Augustas and there's something else that's up there. They're like, I don't even know how much they are. They're like North of like $8 million. Oh, wow. It all depends on how many seats. And then if you get like the dual engine, which is super safe because the odds of having a double engine failure, um, I don't know how that could even happen. Maybe you hit like a flock of birds or something like that. Sully guy. I have no idea, but uh, that's that's way beyond my pay grade. I just like the uh, the A star for me. But like I at this point though, I would if I ever got one, I would upgrade the avionics to have what I have in mind, where I have that traffic button where I can see where everybody is. Because I do the double. I don't just look at it and be like, okay, that guy's there. I look at it and then try to find him. So I feel like I'm on two levels being safe. safe. But, but yeah. then you, you know, have some guy who doesn't have his transponder on like a fucking asshole, which always seems to happen out um, Point Dune, out in fucking Malibu. That's happened to me twice. Like there's just fucking guys all of a sudden, like you're looking at your thing and it's not showing anybody. Look, and there's a guy like underneath you going the other way. And it's just like... Can you yell at that guy? Can you be like, hey, buddy? Like I just- said, I said, whoever's at Point Dune, I just flew over you. I don't think you have your transponder on. And he didn't say anything. I don't know if he's embarrassed or whatever, but he never came back up again. It was just yeah. it was fucking annoying because I was making radio positional calls, letting people. <clears throat> so I don't know if he was just listening. Some of the. That's the thing, Paul. That's the fly in the ointment. Is there's always going to be some fucking idiot up there. You just hope it's not you. So yeah. you just do everything that they tell you to do. But like, I don't know. Aviation's a weird thing because people can't get past the fact that you're up in the air. So all they do is talk about how like not safe it is. And, you know, these fucking kids go down the street in a goddamn scooter wearing their street clothes. No reflectors, yeah. nothing. With people texting while driving in the fucking rain. I mean... Yeah. Give me a helicopter any day. The risk of that over that. That's it's, it's fucking lunacy. Yeah, texting and driving on the highway and or yeah. even like those fucking idiots who dress like they're in a bike race. All of those fucking jerk offs with the stupid outfits. That's right up there with golf. The dumb golf outfits. Like you got to have some obnoxious looking like, you know, cleats or whatever when you walk out College. there like you're gonna be in a three stooges sketch yeah. like the bike bicycle guys are the same way it's like why are you wearing all that shit oh the worst they're the put on sweatpants worst. and a t-shirt this you know stop acting yeah. like you have a time trial do they literally have like they have like the the special sunglasses <laughs> yeah. oh right. oh like Dude, before we before we wrap this one up I gotta talk about this real quick so I watched that documentary about the hatch wielding hitchhiker that kai kid the fucking kid who i guess i couldn't the, watch it dude they're going second like, they started acting like he was like this higher being i'm like this yeah. guy's a fucking lunatic dude th- oh my that's what i'm saying they were like the guy was like there was like charismatic and we thought he was a star i heard him talk for two seconds and i'm like i would want that guy away from me he's a fucking nut he was like, he was like, yeah, dude. So like, you know, he came up and was hitting her. And I just took the thing. I was like, Bleh, Bleh, you know, and then all of a sudden they were like, do you want to come on Jimmy Kimmel? And then he went on Jimmy Kimmel. He was a nightmare. He cursed. He was pissing on the side of the wall. I'm like, get this kid the fuck out of here. He was an absolute asshole. Everybody around them was like, yeah. They, they were just be- hyping him up so you would watch it so they could make money off him. When he's just like, anybody out there, you know, if you're standing out there and you're out there. Just know that you're worth something. And people are like, what? Whoa, yeah, what yeah. the fuck? You it deserve just, respect. Dude, that was you- like literally like hacky self-help. Dude, I watched it and I go, this kid's a fucking asshole already. I go, no, everyone's like, I, we couldn't believe it, man. He was a star. This lady was like, listen, I've been on, I started keeping up with the Kardashians. I know what a reality star I is. I would not pick that kid up thumbing. No. What? You Even if I had a pickup truck without the no. split window, I still wouldn't trust that fucking 
And out of nowhere, he would go like, yeah. And then some fucking, you know, some fucking rich white dude wants one, one band member was in the thing. And he goes, yeah, they called the guy to do a show with us. And at first I was like, no, he goes, then I heard him play the acoustic guitar on YouTube. And I was like, you know what? All right. He's, he's actually pretty good. He's got a good voice. And he comes in and he goes, then the guy's talking. And like out of nowhere, he would just be like, yeah, dude, you got to I'll fucking go out there. This guy tries to hurt this woman. I'll fucking kill him. You know, next thing you know, some fucking white dude fucks you in the ass and you're fucking. And, and they were and he was just like, and then you got to kill him. And he was just the guy was just like, wait, what? He goes, wait, what did you just? And he goes, and everybody laughed. Everybody goes like, ha ha. And he goes, no, the guy just said like. He was raped and he'll kill a guy. Dude, it was just like the weird. I'm going, yeah, get that kid the fuck away yeah. from me, man. I don't know. I didn't like we we just watched the um <clears throat> we just watched the clip, you know, you put on Netflix. I was trying to find casino because I went to uh, the barbershop, you know, obviously to get my beard trimmed. Okay. <laughs> um to get my beard trimmed. And uh they put on fucking casino and I was just watching it. Yeah. How beautifully it shot, the foreshadowing, like where they're just showing old Vegas and all that, then all of a sudden the flames come up and then those people are like falling and, and you're just like, you know, beyond the glitz and all that. Here's, it's, it's all right there. Scorsese, Paul. It's beautiful. It's all there, right? So <clears throat> I was assuming Casino was on Netflix. So I put it on last night and the hatchet guy comes on. And I was just like, I was just like, this guy is dumb. Can, can just, just leave me alone. Yes, I still have a landline. All you fucking hipster douches make fun of me. <clears throat> Hello? Okay. Oh, no. You know what? That's a fucking... That's when, like, the, you know, the Asian lady, you know, those, 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 uh, those spam calls? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. They're, like, speaking whatever their language is. You pick up the phone, like, I tiger, watch, I watch, I got, and you're just like... Yeah, like, why would you pick over here? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no, I didn't like, like that shit. <clears throat> like, I see if they, if they, like, let's just spam Chinatown or Koreatown, like where, where they, the odds. <clears throat> I don't know. But how dumber, how dumber people, how dumber people that the the guy would go. I'm hey, man, I just want to say, like. Everybody deserves respect, man. And if you're out there, you're down on your luck, dude. Like, you're worth something, man. I just want to start that way. Anyway, and then people just fawn over that. That's how fucking dumb people are. And those people that fawn over that, Bill, they vote. They fucking vote. They shouldn't fucking vote. Oh, it's... um, No, those people idiots. are easily swayed. He's a good oh, person. It's a combination, Paul, of being dumb and growing up without love that you would listen to some moron if you're dumb too you're not gonna know he's dumb that's true <laughs> that's a good right? point and yes. if somebody told you to go yes. fuck yes. yourself your whole life all it takes is one guy going like hey man you know like humans are like daffodils if yeah, you're allowed and- to let your roots grow and let the yeah. breeze flow through your petal oh wow man and was it a red flag to anybody that he said that? And then after he said that, moments after he said it, he's like, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, there's something off, dude. You're violent. You have a fucking problem. Then his mom was like, yeah, he's got mental problems. Like, yeah, he's got mental problems. Absolutely has mental problems. Yeah. That so. hatchet's just not going to go. This isn't Dexter. It's just not going to be going into the bad people. I love he was like, yo, dude, straight out of Dogtown, you know, just, he was like shouting himself out. He didn't have an ad- address, yo, straight out of Dogtown, just skateboard and everything, man. It's all love, dude. Anyway, dude, I'll kill any fucking white. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway. Well, anyway, it's just it's it's why I don't believe in a God that cares. Because he makes so many stupid fucking people that are so easily, I don't, I don't know. He makes sociopaths. He makes all of these fucking, like, it's designed, like me sitting here getting upset that they're not containing the water. I, I just have to let go and just turn it over to God, like these religious people say. But I turn it over in a different way, like, this is what you made, because this is the amount of time that you spend making most people 
<clears throat> he slaps them together, Paul. It's a fucking assembly line. I think he tried with the first batch just to get it going. He's not making Every cupcakes. once in a while, he tightens the screws down with an Albert Einstein. You know? Oh, these kids that have to skip grades. But mostly, Paul, he's making guys like you and me on down. <clears throat> like we're at the we're at the <clears throat> the higher end of dumb. All right, everybody. Well, that was uh, episode <clears throat> seventy. That was of- interesting. What he was saying? All right. Well, that was. I was like, that was an interesting episode. Both of us, oh. Paul. I think we got the, we got the so five fucking cough walking in that rain. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is episode seventy three of anything better. We'll be back with seventy four, obviously next time. And um, that's it. Check me out, guys. I'm gonna be. In Toronto, I'm going to be in Toronto, January 28th, and then I'll be headlining Gotham Comedy Club. First time back in New York since my special, Gotham Comedy Club, February 2nd and 3rd, and then Valentine's Day, bring your date. I'll be with Joe Bartnick, Pittsburgh, um, February uh, 14th, which is Valentine's Day, so bring your date, and then all my new dates, guys, paulverzi.com. We're going everywhere, I'm not Bill. doing shit. Bill's off. I'm off. I don't go back out on tour until April. Ah, nice. There you go, guys. So check me out, paulverzi.com. We'll be back next time. Take care.